Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to you all. Hope you're all well this Tuesday evening. Welcome back to the same old Arsenal podcast. Something a little bit different this evening. Uh, we're going to talk about England and England's chances at uh, the Euros. I don't know, do we call it, do we still call it Euro 2020 or do we call it Euro 2021? Um, something like that. It's actually something I didn't look up. Well, so we'll call it Euro 2021, will we? It's the 2021's a year, so yeah. I've got a little feeling it might be that. But yeah. Quite <laughs> well, <laughs> it's true. That is true. Uh, tonight, joining me, um, he's normally in the chat moderating. Well, he's still moderating the chat, so please be nice. Nigel, how are you, mate? I'm fine, thanks, Craig. Thanks for having me, having me on again. You're very light. welcome, mate. Put your, light, uh, put your light meter or something like that. Yeah, have you got on? a light there? Something, <laughs> oh, turn your light back on or something. Uh, uh, no, uh, the meter, I say. <laughs> we can hear him. We can hear him. That's the main thing. Um, well, you're, no, 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 all right, then. Yeah, keep the light down, then. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoy it. was your birthday last weekend, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. It was uh, on Friday. Very happy birthday, mate. A very happy, uh, birthday. happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Hope you had a good time. Judges, yeah, how are you? Yeah, I'm all good. Thank you very much. All good. Uh, looking forward to this one. You know, I'm not really. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest, as you well know. I am not really an England fan. So um... I wish you'd have told me that yesterday when I was. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's all Arsenal for me. I have to say, you know, Arsenal before anything. You know, if someone said to me, "Win the Arsenal." Uh, England to win the World Cup or Arsenal to win the uh, Caribou Cup. The Caribou Cup every day of the week, you know. I'm so. gonna, I'll call you out. And I'm going to call you out here because I saw videos of you at the last World Cup celebrating. Yeah, no, I, I, ah, come on. Camera, I, was acting. I, had to, I had to play up to the camera. You know that. Like, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and joining us this evening, our very special guest, uh, we welcome Warren Barton. How are you, sir? I'm very well, gentlemen. Nice to have you on. This seems like a quiet crowd that I'm going to be joining along here. So <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the, this isn't the quiet. The gloves are off already. So let's yeah, let's I know. We go. <laughs> if, only people, if only people could uh, see us before no, we come we're, live. Yeah, we're sensible, Warren. Don't worry about. It. We're sensible. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, let's start. We'll start with Warren. Warren, Euros just around the corner. A nice, fresh England. Well, a nice, fresh young England team. On paper, we, we, you know, we're quite used to seeing a good England team on paper. I want to ask you about the myth of the press. Do you do you feel that there is massive pressure from the English press on on the England team, and does it affect the players? You being a you know an ex you being an ex international player for England, even not being an international player for Newcastle, playing for Wimbledon. Is that a myth that the press get on your back, or is it? Would it be in the back of their minds? When, when they go over? I think it is, yeah. I think because of the game is so important to every uh, person in the UK uh, or whether pat, expats that are away, um, you know, to follow their club, like you said, whether it's Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, the pressure's there, the expectation's there. Uh, and then obviously it goes twofold when you go for your, your country. So I think the, particularly the written press, uh, I know it's changed in days now with uh, social media that's out there. Uh, and the good thing with social media, you can just turn it off if you don't want to have a look at it. Where, uh, And the press, you could see it in the newspapers, they're around. You can also you know, understand the frustration of some of the fans when you've looked at some of the quality that we've had uh, and the teams uh, and the players, and then we've come short. So the expectations are there. We're still live, living off the back of... Uh, you know, whether it was Euro 96 or Italia 90 of getting there, but ultimately obviously winning the World Cup as we did back in 66. So the pressure's there, uh, but that's built by the expectations of the fans and the belief. But I do believe in recent times with Gareth, um, and he may not be everybody's first choice as a manager, but what he's been able to do is let the players relax and go out there and perform. Um, mm. But obviously it's going to be magnified now because we're so excited with so many young exciting players you know we was talking a little bit about off air who's going to make the, the the roster the squad to go out there you could take a two planes because the the quality of players that we've got uh going out there the young players and what gareth's been able to do with his staff is get them all on the same page you know, you know obviously there's big players big personalities um and he's going to have to make big calls there's going to be a lot of five or six really good players that are going to be stuck behind uh but th yeah it does you know there's no doubt when you represent your country the pressure is on you. It's every boy's dream, I would hope, or woman person's dream to play, represent your country. And it doesn't come any bigger than going into the Euros or a World Cup. Um, and particularly with the expectations now, you're looking around in Europe at the moment. The Italians are going through their own spell. You know, 
the, the Germany now uh, of having with Joachim Lowe, he's leaving at the end of the season. Spain is not the Iniesta Chevy that there was before. Yeah, uh, France is France. You know, if we, they're a, a talented team, there's no doubt about that. Um, and England are in that mix. And I think we've got to be bold enough and confident enough to say, yeah, we are one of the favourites. Instead of putting it down all the time, let's go out there and, and have some have some balls and go out there and play. Because when yeah. you look at whether it's Sanchez or any of these young players, they've got a personality. Uh, but it's one thing having it in the Premier League or the, the Bundesliga. The next thing is doing it on the big stage. And that's going to be the biggest challenge. But they proved before in the World Cup that they can do it. Um, you know, and that's hopefully that that experience that we've had that can take us that step further because we all want it, whether we're England fans, Arsenal fans, or whatever it is. It would be great for to see a group of young players winning a trophy for the country. Absolutely. I mean, Lee, I think he would have he would have learned a lot. I mean, some people say that he had an e an easy route to the semi final uh, in 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 the last World Cup. Well, I think that's a bit harsh. I think you know, I think in tournament football, anything can happen. You know, we've seen it all, but. He would have. He, I think he would have learned a lot about himself um, and a lot about his squad during that World Cup. Even though it's going to be, obviously, it will be completely different. Well, there'll be a few in there, I would imagine. You yeah. know, the Sterlings, the Sterlings, the Canes. The, the, you know, they're still there. I think he's learned a little bit. Yeah, hopefully, he won't take so many Spurs players this time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, so that'd be, that'd be a bonus. I think, honestly, from from my point of view, I, I will say this. I thought, yeah, we had an easy route into the to the final. I think the other route, the other end, was a lot difficult, a lot, lot tougher. I think really, when we played Croatia, that was probably the best team we played, and and we, and, and we shot ourselves in the foot. Really, Harry Kane should have, let, you know, played it across, and we would have been that would have been two 0 It would have been game over. I think he probably has learned a few things. I think one thing that I think. I, I think might go against us. I think because, as Warren just said there, we've got so many good players to pick from. I think that maybe leaving out three or four is going to put a bit of pressure on him, you know, to, to actually, you know, like sometimes, like I, I was thinking about just coming before I come on there, you, you know, right backs and left backs, we've got abundance of them now. Abundance, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so he's going to have to leave one or two out there. You know, the, 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 the midfield thinking players we've got is, is unbelievable, wide players. So, I, I think, you know, sometimes I don't, you know, I, you know, I'm not Gareth Southgate, but sometimes probably like too many players is going to like maybe like, you know, make him make mistakes. I don't know, like, you know, like one player that's got to go for me is Jack Grealish. I think he's got to go and start. I think he's been absolutely outstanding. Um, but, but you know, I think that he's forced the issue, really. I don't think Gareth really wanted him. I say didn't want him. I, don't, I think, you know, that means he's... I think like Gareth will probably thinking, oh, no, I've got to leave out Rashford. I've got to leave out Sterling for him or whatever, like, you know. So, in the actual 11. So, I think it's... But, listen, these are what players have got to do is put pressure on. And um, I think from that point of view, the, the your young players like Foden and, and Saka, I know we're a little bit biased about Saka, but even like watching Man City on... Um, Sunday, I, I thought they were poor, and he comes on, and and I thought they looked different, different class when he come on, like you know. So that just shows you, even if he's going to come on for 10, 15, 20 minutes of a game, he can change. We we got pe people that can come on and change, yeah. change it. So it's oh, been a long, it's been a long time since we've had we've we've had a squad like that. I think an England squad where you have well, got players on the bench. Like, we've had good, we've had good squads. We've had some fantastic players. You know, like that, no no one better in our midfield as far as I'm concerned is England player than Stephen Gerrard. He was absolutely outstanding. We had Lampard, Skulls. We had those sort of players. We're on the these players potentially are on that are on that level. David Beckham and that, but unfortunately we got. I think a little bit unlucky in times. I think, you know, I think in, I think probably, if I'll be honest, the World Cup in 98, I thought we had a really good team there under Glenn Oddle. And I think a little bit of, un, you know, we was unlucky against Argentina. Uh, it could have gone our way on penalties. And I think if we could have gone through on that, I think we might have gone through. John, you know, John Terry, um, we've had some fantastic centre-offs. Uh, Sol Campbell, Rio Ferdinand. So, you know, I think you do need a little bit of luck in this competition. And also, what uh, Warren alluded to it just now, I think when with these teams playing, there was a Brazil around the corner. There was France, yeah. you know, in their, their prime. I don't think there is a prime prime country at this moment. There's not prime France, not prime Spain like there was in previous ones. So, I think it could be like timing as well. Timing could be key. Good timing, yeah. Nigel, what's your thoughts on it, mate? Have, have England got a chance of winning the Euros? 
yeah, I think I think we do have a really good chance with the with the group that we've got, and I think we because obviously we played uh, the Czechs in the qualifiers mm-hmm. for 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 the tournament, and obviously playing the old enemy Scotland, and then then playing Croatia, which we when we lost to them in the World Cup semi final in 2018. I think it's going to be a hard. I think it's going to be a tough group. Don't don't. There's no ifs or buts about it. It's going to be tough, but I think we can get through it. I think we can get go very close. But obviously, you got you got the likes of Germany, which obviously they want to try and do well. Obviously, mm. with the with the coach leaving, and then you got you got the Italians, who 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 you never you never can tell with the Italians and the Spanish, and and the French. Mm-hmm. I think, I think, yeah, I think we've got every good chance, and I agree totally what Lee said about about the squad with like Jack Greenish because I I think he's I think he's had an exceptional season, and it's going to be really going to be really tough to pick a full squad because me and my brother we were having this conversation yesterday about the goalkeepers, yeah, about how, about, but what's going to be like with the with goalkeepers and 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 I agree with like about Pickford, he he he, can, he blows very much hot and cold. Like he played really well in the derby, and then last night he gave away that penalty against Chelsea. Yeah, he's so very hot and cold. I'll just oh, bring this yeah. question. I'll just bring this question in for Warren, uh, John. Jonathan, thanks for your question, mate. Thanks for thanks for watching. I mean, we were talking about it's just off air. Um, that's not what I wanted to bring up. Here it is. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. Um, keeper in centre back decision is key. We were talking about uh, Jordan Pickford, and we were talking about Nick Pope. For me. If I was manager, from what I've seen, Nick Pope would be my number one. I would throw Henderson in there. I think we're gonna. It's about momentum. Whoa, Pickford, cool. Pickford for him it, with Gareth is he's got to let that loyalty go because you've yeah. got to pick players on form. Uh, and any top class manager, whether it's been Arsene Wenger to Bobby Robson to Alex Ferguson, leave players out at the right time. And I think if you play him and he makes a mistake, you lose the whole group. I think if you make that statement that Henderson, Pope, and again, good goalkeepers, um, I think you you make a statement that that's going to be your goalkeeper to build from. I think he has to have presence, has to have confidence. Um, and I think what he has to try and forget, Gareth, is what, what happened in the World Cup when he made the penalty saves and got us there. It's a new slate. It's a new clean players. And I think yeah, that sends yeah, yeah. a message out. So, yeah, I, I think there's a question mark there. Uh, but Henderson, for me, gives me confidence. As a defender, I look at him. He doesn't really make, and I don't want to speak too soon, but too many mistakes. He doesn't take too many chances. He's just a good, solid goalkeeper. And I think sometimes he makes the saves that you need to. Uh, and mm. that's that's one you, I don't hear, see him do too many mistakes, too many ricks uh, that cost you. Um, and that's cost us in the past before. So that would be the number one position that I think he has to make a statement straight away. Uh, and that's the tone. Um, but we're not abundance of, of great world-class goalkeepers. No. I'm not saying they're good goalkeepers. Don't get me wrong there, but they're not at that top echelon, yeah. which we've had before when you're speaking about them, whether it's been a David Seaman or Peter Shilton and things like that going in the past, even before that. But he's a, he's a, there's a solid goalkeepers. And I think you have to have a good foundation. Oh. Who talk going moving on from the goalkeepers and moving up into the defence? Who for you, Warren? Who who gets the armband? Who who would you like to see Oof. leading the team? Oof. Right, I mean, a lot, a, yeah, a lot, it's a Harry lot of Kane. People. Yeah, I, I would go with yeah. Harry. I mean, I know this is you know no, you don't get Arsenal, but I, no, I think he, he would be he would be the one. Mm. You know, I had Alan Shearer as my leader, as my striker. Um, Harry Maguire, I think he's not everybody's favourite, but he's he's not missed a minute of the Premier League in the last couple of years. He had a fantastic World Cup from set pieces. Um, Jordan Henderson's another one, but is he going to be fit enough? Yeah. Or do you start looking for the future? Do you start saying, right, it's going to be a Jack Grealish. He's going to we're going to be, he's going to be my gather. We're going to build a team around him. And he's going to be my leader. I think he thrives in the, the big moments. Or is it a Foden? You know, so he's got options to, to to go there. Do you go like we've predominantly done with experienced leaders, you know, profile on and off the field? Do we go with that captain or do we go with someone that's going to get that armband on their arm and say, you know what, I'm going to take this team wherever it wants to go. You know, we've had Tony Adams. This has been a great captain. He's that type of leader. He's the best captain I've ever been around. Him and Stuart Pearce when we was with England was brilliant. Or do you go with someone that's going to, 
get the ball and you know take the game by the scruff and, they, and, and lead the way. So a, another big, big call. But you, you think the safety shout would be Harry Kane, but is he going to be fit enough? Yeah, it's very true. Lee, the defence, would you... Oh, I've, just... I've, got to admit, I've, got to, I've just got to come in here. Warren's just come up with a great thing about the goalkeeper and you've just gone straight over it on the defence. Have I? Sorry, my apologies. Well, I mean, that, that's the type of people we're dealing with. You know, yeah. you know I, give, I give someone a great lead and they just skip over yeah, Exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Warren, I know you, 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 you put in a... You yeah. put down I'm a glad. Couple. I'm glad you said that. I was thinking exactly much. the same thing. And I got yeah. someone you coming up with a great <laughs> That needs to be addressed, Thank and you've you. just gone on to a captain, which really is 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 a is is set in stone. You know what I mean, like. But uh, well, you know, we're, we're, you're you're learning, you're learning. So uh, now, just going back to Henderson, I think that's a fantastic point because I I, I reckon like Sheffield United are uh, where they are this season because he's not in goal. I will tell you that now, like I thought he was like uh, massive, like massive, massive loss to them first and foremost, and then secondly. It's, and I, I agree with what I'm going to go with, with because I don't think the others are quite good enough. And that's that's my opinion. You know, uh, uh, Pickford worries me. Um, and, and I think if he can get a run of games at Man United now, I think it's, it, I think he'll get it. I really do. And that's the key. If he gets a gets a run of games at Man United. And, and realistically, oh, well, he can't drop him now. Well, like, I can't do that. So that's that one. Um, Harry Kane's nailed on for, for captain. It's, Unfortunately, you know, you're going to have all the Spurs fans saying they've won the Euros because of Harry Kane and all that. We have to put up with that, like, you know. But I, and I have to say, whether you love him or hate him, Spurs or whatever, he is a top top. I thought his performance the other day was, you know, he, he's class, he's well class. There's no, he, doubt. There's he, no I, doubt. I, I, doubt. You know what I mean? He does everything that you want a forward to do. He scores goals, he creates goals, works hard for the team, you know. You, you have to hold your hands up and say, you know, I mean, he's quality. And I think that because of that, I think, you know, as Warren said, look, Alan Shearer probably got it over Tony Adams, which I didn't agree with at the time, maybe because he was the best player in the in the team at the time. That was probably why he got it. Um, and, and plus, he could be a bit moody. So, oh, yeah, but that's another story, like, you know, so... Uh, and, and he's boring. Uh, and he's boring. There you yeah. go. Like, so, that's it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's enough about that. So, that's why Harry Kane's going to get it because he's probably boring and all that. <laughs> he is, yeah. But got- defensively, I think, I, I honestly thought central defence was was a position. I thought, well, that's probably going to let us down. But if you look at it from, from, from the beginning of this season, um, John Stones has come back into to the form, you know, that, which, which was never there, like, you know. Keane at Everton under Ancelotti is a really impressed. Every time I've watched him, I've been impressed with him. So you've then got them two, as as, as we said, Maguire as well. And then like, you know, great, this is, we're going to kick out Eric Dyer. He ain't going to get a game. So that's great. You know, <laughs> so, like, so there's they're, they're the four that are probably going to go. And then you've got um, Tyrone Mings as well that you'd have to bring into that equation. So there's five central defenders now. When this time last season, you'd have probably he was probably going, oh mate, well it was just Harry Maguire and and whatever. So I think now we've got really good, um, a, a really got, good squad of. You've of, also got um, Connor Cody, who, who, yeah, who, yeah, who's right. another shout. Joe, I mean Joe Gomez probably would have walked into that team. With, yeah, another, in, yeah, in yeah, centre half. The have... There's another thing as well, gentlemen. You know, if he does want to go with three, which he's done before, did you throw a Carl Walker in there? Yeah. Then you've got, yeah. you got Trippier. And then so he's going to be contemplating. Tyler Mears, I, I like. I think he's a good, strong, athletic. And then you throw, say, Harry Maguire or Stones. That would be a strong partnership as well. I think, you know, look what Stones has done now with. Um, uh, at Man City with a solid, strong defender next to him. Um, that could be. And, you know, that's where then you start looking at, how, like you said it as well, like how many fullbacks is he going to take or wingbacks? Is he going to take Trippier, Trent Alexander? Um, then you've got James. Chilwell. Well. Uh, Been yeah, well. Chilwell. Yeah, you've got, you've got an abundance of, and we haven't even spoken about the offensive players and we're all Wan-Bissaka. excited about them. Yeah, yeah. you've got one Masaki, you know, got a, a good Bissaka, player yeah. who's played a lot of games for United yeah. and he may not even get a shot. No, no, he may not get a look. I ain't going to go, is he? No. So no. that's... And do you, do you go with Trent Alexander, who's probably having the most difficult time of his career and going into a tournament with lacking form? Or do you go with someone that's full of confidence, like Wambasaka, and play him? You know, he's got he's got some big decisions to make, which is great. We, You know, it's about time we had some big decisions. Yeah, and I have to say this, Luke Shaw on the other side, 
Yeah. I think this yeah. time last year was out of it. I don't think he would have even been... Con He's the best left-back in the country at this moment, uh, in, the, in, in the Premier League, in my opinion, at the moment. Pushing uh, Tierney out of the way. The I, I, every time he plays for Manchester United, He's been top, top class, you know. So, you know, and I, I think like you, you probably look at it that um, Chilwell, who was like, I thought nailed on this time last year, he could could actually miss out mm. if they yeah. if they to try and like, could actually say like, well, we'll try and fit Saka in, and he can cover left back, uh, you know. Uh, so I, I think that's a. I remember so, Ter Terry Venables did it when we played Euro 96. He had Gary Neville and Graham Lasso, but then when we played Spain, he threw Darren Anderton and Steve McManaman as their wing-backs because he yeah. knew we'd have a lot of possession. So Gareth would look at that because obviously Gareth was part of Euro 96 and think, you know, instead of having two, like full-backs, full-backs, do I then take wide players that can play like wing-backs for me? So when we got the ball and them two would fit in like, you know, like a glove because them two... You know, would do perfectly well as as wing backs pushing forward, particularly with their quality on the ball. So there's a, there's another dilemma for him to, to yeah. take on. Yeah. It's, 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 the the, the merry-go-round that's going on with the players. We've won it. We've won yeah. it. We've won <laughs> it. Yeah. Was... And we ain't even playing a striker. Yeah. <laughs> we've got no midfielders either. We got, yeah, we ain't got a hold of midfielder. <laughs> There is a like Lee, you're dead right. The, the the magical roundabout at the moment, like you're saying, Ben Chilwell nailed on. Now you're now you're not so sure. You you'd look at him and say, you know, will he even get a place? Luke Shaw's come back into contention with some really, really good performances. With uh Basaka playing for Man United. There really is Gareth Southgate really has got um a headache. Oh yeah, Maitland Niles, of course. <laughs> Maitland Niles. Yeah. Now you're being um, now you're being stupid. Now yeah, you're being now, yeah. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm sorry like, about that, Warren. He, he like does that. Him. I like him, but he ain't got, he can book his holidays, he'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's off to Dubai. He's off to Dubai. No. <laughs> he uh he, he does that every now and then Lee goes off on months. Um, he's been in the last couple of squads. I, I, I know he ain't going to make it, but you know, you can't. No, he's, yeah. he's been in the last couple of squads, true, very yeah. true. Should we move on to we'll move on up to some offensive players? I think uh, another young player who I really like watching, obviously, other than Saka, uh, is Mason Mount. I think he's definitely on the plane, mm. um, going to the Euros. Is he? I think so. Defin definitely gets a seat for me anyway. He's definitely a player I want to see playing. I think mm -hmm. he's a fantastic midfield player. Do you, do you like him, Lee? I do like him. I do like, but then, you know, I, I like all those sort of players. I like Madison. I like mm -hmm. Mount. I like Grealish. You know, Saka, Foden. I don't think you can take all of them. I really don't. I don't think you can. can. So, um, um, that'd be a real difficult one. Like, you know, I, I think Mason Mount, I don't know, is it because it, because he's at Chelsea, I don't think he gets the praise that he deserves for something. I don't know why, because like, I, I, I just feel that these other guys just get more, I don't know, say better publicity. I think like just sort of like branded a little bit better. I don't know. I, I, you know, soon he was left out, I think, out of um, the first game for Chelsea when it when the new manager came in and, and, and they was, oh, that's him done. And he's come back and I think he's got everything. I think, you know, yeah. he can take on players, score goals. I think if I'll be honest, and uh, if you look at, I think he's got that, that goal scoring for it. I, I think that's what lets Gra um, Granite Xhaka, that's what lets uh, Saka down for us. Like, you know, he, I think his goal scoring is not quite, but I think Mason Mount as a finisher, He's probably up there with in front of all of them, him and Madison, probably. I think, mm. well, he does more than Madison and Grealish. And again, you want your offensive players to go forward. But Mason Mount will track back and help out. I think he's more athletic than them two. I think when Grealish gets the ball, you get on the edge of your seat. Madison is a little bit below Grealish, in my opinion. I th still think yeah, Madison's a good agree. player. But I think Mason Mount at Chelsea does the other side of the game. I think he does a little bit. And you're going to need to do that against Croatia, who manipulate the ball really well. And other teams, hopefully, when you get... I think he does well. And I think the, the criticism he got is because he was Frank's you know, player, his boy, because he played him every single game. He left people out. He was done well for Chelsea. You know, every coach has had their favourite. You know, every every coach has had a player that they play and fans seem to think, well, why would you keep playing him? And even other players think, well, how comes he keeps getting in the sheet? But he does other things in, in the game. You know, he took his goal well at the weekend. Um, and he seems to be when you go away in these trips as well it's for five, six weeks he seems a good personality to be around He's, he doesn't seem mm. moody 
Good point. Yeah, imagine, imagine being around Martial for five weeks oh, in the French. That, yeah. you know, you'd, be, you'd be pulling your hair out, wouldn't you? But yeah. he seems a good fella. Every morning he wakes up that, looking, look, looking, looking forward to, to, the, to the day and what he's going to do. And that's important. You know, we had, although he didn't play a lot, Robbie Fowler was always upbeat. Steve, him and Steve McManaman was always up to something. And then you throw a gazer into that Euro 96. It was, it was fun. Every time he was waking up to look forward to things. And that had a knock-on effect in the group as well, you know, and then you had Terry Venables who was very much uh, a personality as well. So you look at, you know, the, the squad that he's got, Mason Mount, it's not just what he can do on the field, which is obviously important, but I think he brings a lot of good things out. You know, his mate is uh, Declan Rice. You know, do you have him or or Henderson? Do you play three in midfield or just two? You know, Declan Rice had a great game the other night, although okay, against Leeds, but he still had a good game and look where West Ham are at the moment. Do you throw him on the plane? Do you take a Jordan Henderson? Who, again, good personality, but is he going to be injured? Is he going to be like a Luke Shaw? Are you going to, if he can keep going, you're fine. But the thing that would marry me with Luke Shaw, is it going to be game two against Scotland and then he's injured and then we've lost a player for that. So that's going to be in the back of the back of his mind. But I think, you know, Mason Mount does a, a good job. And a lot of coaches understand. Fans sometimes don't, see it all not all fans but some fans well he's he's one of Frank's boys but he did a lot of good things so I think he's got that little edge over Madison I think Grealish you've got to take he can, oh, he, he, he can change, change a game and we spoke about it before it's not necessarily for the 90 minutes it's frying someone on with 15 20 mm. minutes ago and Grealish to say give me the ball I'm gonna I'm gonna make it happen Foden's the same they're, they're, you, they've got that personality do you think like um, someone like um Mason Mountain can play as like a number eight, sort of like, so we don't have to play two holding role. Like, you know, we yeah. sort of like look at him as more of a number 10, but he could play that role. So we could go Declan Rice, him, and then maybe Greg, Jack Grealish in behind that or something like that. Yeah, no, around. definitely. I, I think you could play. Yeah, so that could, would push him in front of Madison, wouldn't it? Yeah, you could play. Because you yeah. think Sterling's going to be on right, Rashford, Kane. You think that would be, and then that leaves Sancho out. You know who can play well, and oh, so yeah. you, you think he's going to play that four-three-three. If it is, then if you do, you need someone to help Rice out a little bit and let Grealish just float around and get the ball and make things happen in an ideal world. You know, but you know that that's where I think he gives you that little bit of security because right. he will come back. I don't think you could play Madison Grealish and leave Declan Rice because it, it'd be on a desert island because um, other, other teams will, will have the ball sometimes. Does um does like we we spoke about him off air and of course we, we come in now with our with our Arsenal hats on. Abaki Arasaka could play left back, could play left wing, could play could play in the middle even. And that's why I would take him. Yeah, he's, he's so he versatile. Play, he can yeah. play three and play really well at three different positions. Three different roles. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. That, that, that's going to help him. Like where 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 you're saying like Mason Mount, he's a talented player. Might just get him through person. Just might edge him from personality. I think like Saka gets it because he's like versatile in two or three positions. I think like you know, um, I forgot about um, S- uh, San- Sancho. Um, mm. Bullshit, like you know. What I mean, I-, I think he ain't very been... exciting player. But, yeah, but he, you know, and he's done well for England, by the way. But the way I'm looking at, it, I've, I. I, I I, I forgot about him. You know what I mean? Like, I, hope, I hope Gareth don't do that and forget someone. I do like you, know? yeah, you, you, you forget your birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I do. laughs> well, Jordan Sancho. I mean, we, well, it's a he's, he's, one, go, he's got to he's got go or not. I think he's got to go, Jordan Sancho. Got to go. He's got. He's a very, very exciting player. I love him. Um, I think he's a fantastic player. Uh, it's all about 120 million pounds at the beginning of the year. Yeah, it's so, yeah. I've gone off the radar a little bit. And I'm, I, uh, he does well in Dortmund. The problem, yeah, is yeah, probably, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I think the problem at... is it's out of sight, out of mind, isn't it? Yeah. Well, no. Well, hopefully not. Forget. I tell you what, they've got, they've got some. There's some difficult decisions here. You know. Um, oh. You think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could good, make a good podcast. Yeah. 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 That'd be a great debate. Go, if you could put it on the podcast. Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah, about a, good, a good podcast. Just before yeah. we move on, I've got a question. Um, who's the manager anyway? I think yeah. uh, <laughs> Gareth Southgate might be saying, I've cut that he's get injured, you know. What do you think thinking that? God, I, well, no, I, no. Nah, I don't think so. That's I don't fair, think so. That's you, that's you being old and malicious. That's, that's all that is. That's you. <laughs> you you've, been locked, you've been locked up too long. <laughs> well, there's a question <laughs> coming there. It's devil in me. There's a question coming there. Um... For you, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Um, it's, it's a super chat question. Uh, but 
What happened to Warren on NBC Sports? Used to enjoy his analysis, thorough and insightful. Well, if you did your homework, I was with Fox Sports. So NBC earned the rights. So they took it over and they had uh, Robbie Earl, uh, Tim uh, is on there now, Tim Howard, and Robbie Musto and Danny Higgin. But I'm still contracted with Fox Sports. So as much as I would love to be on it, um, we're getting ready for World Cups and other things. So, yeah, that's what happened with the NBC. They took over the rights. Uh, a little bit like what happened with Sky and then yeah. uh, BT. So we we, yeah. we got outbidded and, and they t- they do a really good job. Um, and I you know, enjoy watching their programmes. So you never know. I- I'd fly over to the East Coast to go and do a few games for them. But <laughs> uh, we- we'll see. If he-, if he knows anything, tell him to speak to him and then see if they need anyone to come <laughs> and-, and talk a little bit of sense with a personality. Let's see how they go. Just, just going, <laughs> off topic, going off topic a little bit now. We is the-, the Premier League's massive in America, is it? It's huge. I mean, yeah. obviously the women's game is is massive over here uh, and their national team, but the Premier League is a, is a juggernaut. Um, you're up against the NFL, you're up against the NBA, but as a league in general, Bundesliga has tried to push it out here. The MLS is obviously the MLS; it's their own sport, and they want that to 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 do well. But the Premier League with the the marketing what's been done whether it's with Fox and then it was obviously with uh, NBC. Uh, the Premier League have realised that it was a a massive untapped market. They've been to the Far East and the fan bases that they have out here, the money that it generates with shirts and, you know, ticket sales and, and watching it is is huge. So yeah, it's a it's a massive, massive entertainment business out here. And the, the figures that they get watching games and whether it's Arsenal supporters clubs all over the States, not just certain mm. pockets, uh, are huge. And uh, it's great because you you watch the game and you you can see that the you know the the passion is there, the knowledge is growing, the understanding of the game. Uh, it is there and in, particularly in the last three or four years he's gone through the roof and it's a it's a great great marketing by the Premier League and hopefully that generates and you know they need better quality games sometimes and even through the pandemic the figures have been good particularly with game every single day it seems like we never mm. stop watching a, a Premier League game mm. so it, it's huge in America and, and the Americans have, have jumped onto it it's, it's reminds me of what happened in the early 90s when it went from the old football league to the Premier League, like yeah. within two years, and you'll remember, it just went bang. It went through the roof, and it was the marketing, it was the sales. We've always had it in the UK. We've always had the fan base of, you know, watching the team. But all of a sudden, it went to everybody. You know, whether it was it wasn't just working man people, and I know Roy Keane said about, you know, all the corporate people. It was families going to games, kids was watching games. It was a real, uh, you know. Uh, great effect that it had with everybody because predominantly you know in the 80s it was men it was men that went and watched the games yeah. now everybody's going you know and everybody's got a, an opinion about it and everybody's watching the game for me it's great for the game you know and i'm old mm. school you know I've, I've been brought up in that way but for me going to see kids and the dad with his son going to watch a game not having to yeah. worry that you're going to get chased through a car park with someone just because you got mm. their colors on i think you know them days have gone um and I well, think it's wonderful. Colours, can't you? Years ago, you know, in the 80s, you couldn't wear colours. No. You couldn't away no. From home. I remember you going to White Hart Lane when, when Chippy's got the beaten 1-0 and I had a red roll neck on. I didn't think about it. And I got chased through the park. And I was mm. about 12 years of age. Luckily, I could run. <laughs> 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 Luckily, I could run. Yeah, I was off. I left, me, I left me brother. Wait, wait, wait. You didn't stay in your ground. What's going on like? You know I mean? It was 15 of them. It was 15. I was off. Man, yeah, on your toes. No problem. I looked for some ball. There was no one there. I never, I'll never wore that red roll neck again. <laughs> We we'll move on to we we'll move one player we haven't we haven't mentioned. Um, well, I think he's another definite. Of course, is uh, Raheem Sterling. He, I mean, he's he's surely in the start and eleven, Lee, isn't he? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I've been I'm gonna gonna be honest. I'm gonna be really honest about him. The last couple of games I've watched City play, I've been a little bit disappointed with him. I don't like, you know, d- didn't really do a lot on the in the Manchester derby and all that, but. You know, hasn't done that. Oh, but oh, funny enough, he pops up and scores against Arsenal. That's the last time we've done anything like that. You know what I mean, so, um, but I do like him. I do like him as a player. He's got pace. He's one of those players. I don't know if you're agree with this, Warren, but like once his pace goes, that'll be him gone. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's very reliant on his pace, pace uh, player. But I, I do, I, I, I do like him. I do like his attitude. And he's uh, the one good thing about him, I suppose you will say, he, he always nick a goal, even if he's not playing well. He nick a goal, like he did against the Arsenal, you know. And so, and, he, and he's a he's a he's a nuisance. So uh, 
He's like Zebedee keeps jumping in and out. Yeah. Oh, no, he's, he's having trouble with his Wi-Fi, bless him. Yeah, I, I think um, with Sterling as well, you're right. I think he's relied a lot on his pace in the past, but I think Pepper's trying to mould him a little bit to come inside and play little combinations. I remember playing against Robert Perez, not particularly the quickest player in the world, but what a, what a football player. How'd you get on? How'd you get on? He's in my pocket somewhere. He's in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from you beat, when you beat us 5-0. Other than that, it was fine. I, I was doing well until Patrick got on the ball. Um, <laughs> mate, it was funny. When I used to be playing left, there'd be Robert Perez. And then all of a sudden, Terry Henry used to start drifting over. I'd say, come on, do me a favour. I said, my wife and kids are here. My family's here. Go on the other side. Go, with John, go, and, I can go against John Beresford, will you? And play, <laughs> tear him to pieces. But no, I think Raheem is... I agree with you. The game at the weekend, there was glimpses. He missed that sitter uh, that come across. But I think he's oh, such a, an intelligent little player that he can play in other little areas, little pockets. Um, and he's played at a high level for a number of years. I mean, his stats, were, I think he's got nine goals this season. When you think, oh, I'm playing for City, how many chances they create, uh, he's only got nine goals. But I think he's a special little player and he's, he's changing slightly to where it was just like get the ball down and run with his pace. I think he's after, having, he's still a young man. I mean, he's still only uh, mid mid to mid, like twenties, uh, you know, so he's still got a lot of football in, involved in him, but I think he is a player that can, he puts the opposition on their back foot because of his reputation, because of where he's played. And I think Pep's done a, a great job of changing his, his style a little bit where Liverpool is just totally relied on his pace. Now he's matured a little bit in his, his ability to bring other people in. Mm -hmm. I think, but for watching him play for England, I think I know obviously you enjoy playing for your country, but I think Raheem Sterling just looks like he's so comfortable playing for England. He doesn't seem to be, he doesn't look to be so under pressure as some of the other players, Lee, when he plays for England. And yeah. I think some, sometimes he plays better for England than he does for Manchester City. I, I was just going to ask Warren a question here, like, do you know, what I mean? out of the two, say Robert Perez or Sterling, who would you like prefer to play up against? Uh, Sterling, Robert Perez. Well, one that was—I mean, the team that he was in. But Robert could do. He was really a top-class player. I think again, another. He wasn't underestimated by all means because he's a you know a, a wonderful player. But because he was like oh exceptionally quick, he's not like an out-and-out -out winger. And but he was he he had a great brain, a great pass to the ball. I mean, he had obviously people like Burkham and that around him. But he was a top-class player. Sterling, I'd, I'd be more comfortable against him. Robert Perez, I, I used to try and run him off and run him away. But the thing was, I was running straight into Ashley Cole, and Ashley then would get it and give it back to him, and then I'll be chasing fifty yards back to try and get the ball. But um, Sterling would be more comfortable for me because. I don't think he has the same attributes that Robert Perez has with his intelligent right. goal. Although I'm saying Raheem is an intelligent player, Robert Perez had that, as, as Terry said, that Judas say choir about him. That's I, I'll write that down because you won't understand that. that I, 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 not, listen, I got, I've done French at school, so you're out of order saying that. Like, you, know, like, <laughs> yeah, like. you, didn't, you didn't say you passed. You said you Come on, tap L2. Stick that one up your trolley. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm interested in what you're saying because I'll, I'll, defenders have always been like scared of pace, haven't they? Like, you know, so it's and, one, the one thing we don't like, yeah, yeah, you know, what I mean, and, and and you know, well, that's what England have got in abundance mm. in, in, in mm. those sort of areas, you know, what I mean, and, and Sterling typifies that, if I'll be honest. And that's what I like because if you've, if you've got that pace, it stretches the game, and then when you stretch the game, you've got people like Grealish can get on the ball, Foden can get on because the, the game yeah. gets stretched, exactly, and, and that's where I think they can come into their their own and then a little bit of space for like when Skulls had it like where he could run into it. so Mason Mount has now got space to operate in and you know if you have that genuine pace of Rashford uh, you know Harry Kane's not quick but he's, he's quick enough to take people away because they're petrified of him because if he gets half a chance the chances he's going to put it away and Raheem is the same you know they, they create space for other people so that's what you know we've got and Sancho might have to do that just keep running someone away to create space for someone else. Um, mm. And if, if they don't go with him, then hopefully we've got someone like Grealish or Madison or someone that can roll in the ball and then you know, hopefully Rashford can put it away. So, you know, we've got every every corner covered here for England. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have. Now. We certainly we have. have. Well, we mentioned the other forward yet. We'll be, yeah, no, be going with nine men. We'll be going with nine men. Another player, another player who I who I hope who I hope to see there, I hope gets to, to travel with the squad, is uh, uh, Calvert-Lewin. I really, really like Calvert Lewin. Uh, mm. Big, tall, strong, so quick. He can do everything. Edder it, shoot, big and strong. Still only very, you know, still a young player. Obviously, Harry Kane. Harry Kane gets the nod in in any England team. Even you know, it hurts me, it pains me to say it. 
Harry Kane is world class. He is, well, and there's no getting around it. So I mean, he get he gets the start, but up up the top there. I think uh, Calvert Lewin Warren would would be a, another good another good person to take. Yeah, I think again it's like for like. Um, you know, Tammy Abraham at Chelsea is another one, but he's lost his mojo a little yeah. bit. You know, mm. um, doesn't seem to be the player that we we thought it was going to be, and that can happen with young players. But Calvin Lewin has has got a coach around him, and obviously someone like Duncan Ferguson that's pushing him. Who I know with my time at Newcastle and. Totally different centre forwards. You know, Duncan was get it up in the air and I'll knock it down and knock everyone else out of the way. Uh, Calvin Lewin's a little bit more, uh, <laughs> relies on his movement and his pace. Um, so, and again, it's like any forward. If they're in, in form, you've got to take them because I know it's a crazy thing to say. And I said it about, you know, we was lacking another forward. I would even try and persuade Vardy to get off the retirement. Team oh, yeah, it's a good shot. And just that. throw him in. If to yeah. come with us as a last swan song. I don't know how it how it would go with some of the others. But if Calvin Lewin's doing well and Tammy Abraham, you don't really need to rely on Vardy because you think, well, I've got these other players coming through. So again, we've not had, you know, abundance of strikers, but I think we've got enough to get by. I think we've mm. got enough to play. And, you know, Sterling can play that false nine as we've seen him play. Whether Gareth's in that bracket of Pep Guardiola intelligent of how to do that but Sterling would know how to play that sort of position but definitely you know Calvin Lewin is a striker that again can cause you a problem because he he will put himself around he will work he's relishing the opportunity to play for England he's scored a couple of goals he's got a good appetite for the game um, and another one that seems to fit the mould of getting on with people um, he doesn't walk around moping around I think he's hungry to be successful do you think Jamie Vardy has Jamie Vardy retired too early for you then? Because he has for me. I, I, yeah, I love. But, but I think it was like Paul Scholes, and, and they, it was like I ain't keep going on the plane if I'm going to sit there and only play 15 minutes. I think he, Jamie Carragher did it. Mm. Uh, you know, what's the point of my going if I've got Rio? You know, John Terry. I'm never going to play, so you know, I'm going to stay at home and play for my club. So, yeah, to answer your question, I, I think particularly coming into the game so late as well, played non-league football, come in. You know, 26, 25, and now he's burst onto the... Well, not burst on the scene. He's been there long enough, but the original, when he came on there, won the Premier League. Um, I still like him because I think he, he... You said about a pest, and a, I think yeah. he, he irritates people. And yeah. he will, he will kick like someone. That. He will leave someone's foot in there, and yeah. they say something to him, he'll tell them to do one. Yeah. You know what I mean? He ain't going to yeah. back down. He, I, I mean, he, he irritates me as a fan. Like you know, watching him play against Arsenal because he, you know, he always he like Denny Lee. He always likes a goal against oh, Arsenal, Denny Jamie Vardy. But he's yeah. one of those players I can remember. I can remember when we got linked with him, and and everyone said, oh, "I don't want him. I don't want him. He's a you know, he's a bastard." But I used to say to people, "Yeah, but he'd be our bastard." Mm. Yeah. Do, 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 do you know, like I think I think because he's come through non-league, he's got that nasty streak in him, which you have to have when if you play non-league football, you have to have that little bit about you. Know, Back, you know, even not so much nowadays, I suppose, but like back in the day, you you had to uh, be physical, and I think that he's he's quite happy to go toe to toe with defenders. I also um, I, I, I like his attitude. He wants to score goals all the time, and he gives it. So what? You know what I mean? But I, I think probably like that's an interesting point. He, listen, football now, he probably looks at it and thinks, well, if I don't, if if I have a summer off, gives me an extra year playing with big money, you know what I mean? Like, And I do think that comes into it now. I, I felt probably 10, 15 years ago, maybe not so much now, but now they want to look after, preserve their careers. And I think he's probably thought, well, instead of uh, running around training and getting 10, 15 minutes, I'll, I'll rest up and be really in focus for, 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 and thought with himself, if I'll be honest. And I think that, you know, like, you can't blame him for that. Like, I was, yeah. you know, my mate did that, Alan Shearer, you know, at Newcastle. He, he had an yeah. ACL, then he had an ankle injury and it was hard for him to get up every every season. And in the end, he had to choose the club or international. Yeah. And, you know, Alan was obviously a number one striker and would have kept playing, but it, it was his body and felt like he could prolong his career at, yeah, at, exactly. at Newcastle. And Vardy's probably the same, you know, if I yeah. could hang around. I mean, a good uh, point. Yeah, a good point comes in there from Dan. He says, to be fair, um, Dan Price, thanks, mate. To be fair, Vardy, he's added a few years onto his career at Leicester by retiring. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Alan Shearer done that with England, didn't he? Like uh, yeah. with with Newcastle, and mm. probably other players have done it as well. Like you know, so um, that's an interesting point. The other one to go we haven't we haven't mentioned is uh, is Mason Greenwood. 
Mason Greenwood, and it's funny you, you've mentioned his name because I was going to come on to him and another player that I think this tournament has come just a bit too quick for, and that would be him, Mason Greenwood, um, and Hudson Adoy. But I think I think this tournament well, do you remember uh, that has, has come a, has come a bit come a bit quick for him. Remember that time in Dublin when we was at us oh. we in Dublin? He was unbelievable. What a player! Be nothing like it. No, but no, he was he brilliant was, that night, wasn't he? I know it was only a friendly and all that, but he's never come on. Um, he's not. Well, what I see of him that day, it was unbelievable. But I don't think he's quite kicked on from that. You know, and it's but, really strange because that night he had Bellerin on toast every time he got the ball, didn't he? Well, you could have Bellerin on toast. Well, true, you know, yeah. Right? yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> with, you a could, av- with a bit of avocado, it'd be yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that way, yeah. So. Uh, and he was a goalkeeper, so that's how bad Bellerin is, you know. Okay. So, uh, but um, no, you know, I don't, yeah, I think maybe to uh, I don't think he's really pulled up too many trees at um, Chelsea, really. You know, what I see of him that day, you would have said superstar in the making. I think, I think you've got a great point. I think when you see him playing, when Thomas Tuchel's played him, he's like direct and quick. But then it's like, we've, let's go back. Do you take him instead of Sancho? Do you take him instead of no. Sterling? So that's going to be his thing. You know, you're right. It maybe is a little bit too early for both of them. But Hudson Odoi has probably got a better chance uh, because uh, of, of playing a little bit more regular. But then, do you take him instead of X, Y, Z? And I think unanimously would say no. If there's an injury or something, then there's a player. He's versatile. He can come on and change it. He's got blistering pace. Uh, still a little bit raw in his game, um, but obviously there's there's talent there and there's ability there. It's been linked with Bayern Munich, wasn't it, for 50, 60 million yeah, euros? Yeah. So, you know, you can... T- yeah, they, yeah. they don't normally buy bad players. So, no, they don't, no. So, That's you know, point. from that point of view. But I just think there's too much in front of him at, at, at the moment uh, mm. for him to to make a big, big claim. But again, it's, it's lovely to, to try and turn away them couple of players. I think they will be in the next three years, four years, big Premier League players for their clubs. I can think, I, can I ask yeah, you a question? Of course you can, of course you can. So if you get left out of an England squad, Warren, right? And I, I've are, asked are, are you taking the piss because it's happened twice? <laughs> no, no, I'm not taking the piss. I'm asking a nice, serious question here, like, you know. Oh, my apologies, Warren, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. no problem. Sorry about the language as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all. So on the two occasions that you got left out of the England squads, you know... Um, I thought you weren't going to mention it. Oh, sorry, I couldn't help it. No. Couldn't help it. <laughs> That's twice you mentioned it in one fucking statement. <laughs> <laughs> if you let me say, if you let me ask a question, I won't repeat it again. Well, I, I know the question. <laughs> All right, two times you got left out. Right? Did you? Did you want England to win, or was you like, oh, yeah, don't be you, so even though you got left out? You, you fill out that question. It's such a stupid question. No, no, in England. No, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, because you I, I, you've asked me four times, and no, you've asked a stupid you, question. You know, it's like you saying, I don't want England to be successful. It's a stupid answer. No, uh, no. Because, like, I'm just yeah. thinking, do you know what I mean? Like, you say, like, if you get, you know, like, if he was on a Saturday, maybe people are different, but if, like, say, I got left out and he was on the bench, I think, I hope they lose. I don't say, I hope they lose. I hope they don't do well today. You know what I mean? You, no, you know what no, I'm No, no, no. I was still recovering from the dentist chair in Euro 96. So. <laughs> <laughs> France 98, Glenn made it perfectly clear. He didn't want to get me. So I wasn't shattered by that. But no, you want, you know, I want our country to do well, whatever it is, whether it's netball, rugby, cricket, you know, I'm patriotic. And, you know, yeah. for me, playing non-league football, being told twice you're too small, the caps that i got, no one can ever take that away from me. But yeah, yeah I would have, there's no way for me to say no. I, I'm not malicious like that. Sometimes in the club, you, you know, when I was against an Aaron Hughes or a Newcastle, there's that competitive edge. Um, but international, international. And it's the same. You, you, you put yourself disappointment aside and you want your country to do well. Uh, but that's me. You know, I, I think there are some people who've got little voodoo dolls and stick it in the manager and the players, but no. I would have been one. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're like Victor Meldrew. You've got no one. You, you, celebrate, you celebrate holidays in your house or what? Yeah, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Thank you very much. like Roy Keane. Imagine you two on a long-distance flight to Australia. Fucking hell. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're going to be jumping what? out the plane. I'll be all right. I'll be. As long as you ain't the pilot, I don't mind. You know what I mean? So, I'll, be, I'll be in first class. You'll be in the cargo. <laughs> <laughs> two more players I wanted to mention, or I think might be in with a little shout. Is there still two more? We can't still two, every, every yeah, player. There's, still, there's just two more. I think Is this a might, four hour podcast? might be in with a little shout. We're nearly done, actually. And uh, this is the last two players now I was just wanting to mention. One of them um, being James Ward-Prowse, Warren. 
Ooh. any chance any chance of him getting a getting a seat? That's a good shout. It's a good shout. I was going to be a bit malicious there. Well, I'm, 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 I, I, I am gonna, sometimes, sometimes when I'm sometimes when I'm writing notes, I can't be quite. Help, help yeah. lifting the kit off, but no. He's, yeah, he's, so, he's sometimes. A, no. I don't think he's at that level. I, I don't. I, I think what he's done at Southampton, I think he's a a good player. But it, it's going back to what we said about Hudson Odoi. If yeah. people get yeah. injured, if this happens, it'd be a solid little player to take. But he's not. You mentioned it with Harry Kane. He That's ain't that cool. world class. He ain't like Rashford. We can see being world class. Sterling has proved that he's played at a high level. He's a good player. We think Grealish can be that X factor. I don't think he's that player. But again, a good squad player. But I mean, he would be one of them like me. Happy to help there. Give me 10, 15 minutes. But, you know, is it going to be enough to change a game? Are we well, saying- do, you, do, do, you, do you think he has an England future? It, as a squad player, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think if people don't, he'll always be in that conversation. I think his dead balls have been really good. Um, it'd be in that bracket of that 30, 35 players that will be spoken about representing the country. We haven't mentioned Harry Winks. What's the chances of Harry Winks going like? Is it, is it, is it Harry Winks? Has he got a chance? Who's, that? Go? Who's he play for? I don't know. Like, I mean, like, he ain't going to go, is he? Surely there's too many good players now. Like, I think oh. he's. Don't call me Shirley. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't think, I don't, no, Harry, again, neat, tidy. Um, yeah. Now, I, I will say, he can, he can carry the bags if he wants. You know, I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. There are about 15 of them carrying the bags. <laughs> but no, he's not, again, he's just that little bit, you know, let yeah, him play. Know. You know, people have got Champions League games and Harry's, and Gareth is picking a squad. You know, he, he'd definitely go out there and give his all for his country. But I just, yeah, he's just that little bit short. Mm. I think coming I'm around to. I'm beginning to warm to you again, Warren. I'm beginning to warm to you, like. Now, God, I'm petrified now. <laughs> after these, after after this tournament, there's a, I mean, there's a few players there. I think who have got bright futures ahead of them. One of them being Ward Prowse, um, Harvey Barnes mm. uh, would be yeah, he's injured. Would, now. He's bad injury. Isn't he? I know he's a bad, but he's another one. Um, yeah. and, and another player, I was gonna say might be a with an outside chance, Patrick Bamford. Who plays for Leeds? Would would he would he be able to provide any? You know, would he be able for for Kelvin Lewin, Harry Kane, no, or, or is, is Patrick Bamford one of those players again, like the Adoys, like the War Prouses? It's come around a bit, just a bit too quickly. Yeah, I, for him. I would put him in in that bracket. Yeah, I yeah. I put him in that. That's yeah. again, it's another six or seven that you think are a good players, but maybe not that that level to take us on. Um, yeah. You know, who's to say for the next World Cup and, and stuff like yeah. that with the, the compare belt? You know, like I think I, I like, yeah, and I do like it. I looked at the kid Brewster. I did the, the World Cup oh, uh, yeah, when, he, when he, when he yes. was at Liverpool and, and done well with, with, with Foden. And he looked to be a, an out and out finisher. The next yeah. like a Robbie Fowler, but he's gone to Sheffield and they've struggled a little bit. But there's, there's no doubt about his ability. Um, but yeah, as I said, he, he's in that let's wait and see bracket. You know, yeah. that, you know it, they may progress, but. I think there's, you know, as I said, we we spoke about so many mm. good players, um, but they just he's really got, he's really yeah. got a headache, hasn't he? Yeah, I, I, and I think if he was honest, if we after this, if we sat down and wrote all the players, you know, go for all the teams where they are, you probably end up having fifty players that you think mm. could do a job. Not think, sure. that could, yeah, could could, could yeah, do a job. Calvin Phillips, he's he's, he's another yeah. one. Mm. Started off well. I mean, Smith Rowe's been mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Well. Yeah, Smith Rowe. Yeah. Again, so, maybe you know, not not yet, but not yet. But hopefully, you know. he progresses with Arsenal and gets that opportunity with Arteta, because them two have really got Arsenal back in some momentum. Yeah. And now, and now, Bama Yang is starting to try and be the player that the Arsenal fans hoped he was going to be. You know, get you know, start scoring some more goals. But um, <laughs> you know, there's some good young players at Arsenal. Coming Danny Welbeck. Five or six. Da- da- Danny Welbeck for a shout. It's coming in the chat. Mm-hmm. No, nah, listen, Danny Welbeck, <laughs> unlucky with injuries. I tell you, like, you know, for uh, whole, I like Danny Welbeck. I, I, I do too. You're going to get with him. Weren't top, top notch. But listen, you don't go and play at Man United, win a win a title and not be a decent player. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. So he, he's got saying about him and uh, yeah. just unfortunate injuries. Come to Arsenal, you know, same old story about Arsenal. Too many injuries, like, you know, so... Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're coming to the end, so I'll ask the last question of the evening, and of course, the last question is, Warren, is it coming home? Yes. <sighs> and the well, world. Like he it. lives, he lives oh, in America. Right. He, 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 he don't care, does he? He lives in America. 
I'll be the first one to run down my beach with my England shirt on. <laughs> Love it. With nothing else, just the English. Shirt. Oh, just, just the English. Shirt. Shirt. <laughs> Can you video that? Like, you know, like, I'll superimpose it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what, what are you saying, mate? Is it? Is it? Do you think? Do you think it could? Ser- could England be serious, serious contenders for the Euros? You know what? I, I think they've got a real, real good chance. I just think that France, maybe with um, impact, I think it's just they've just got a little bit, a little bit more. You know, with Robert Perez on the wing and Patrick Vera down the middle, you know, they're going to be hard to, to stop those French boys, you know what I mean? So, uh, no, nah, like, seriously, they've got Pogba, who's a top player for France, by the way, when he plays. They've got um, they've got some good players, France. I just think, may, maybe, but I think we're going to come close. I really do. I, I, I think we could could do it. We could no, do I, it. So I, 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 I want to see, see, we'll see what I'm running down. I want to see what I'm running down the beach. I just want to see that now. Like, I'm gonna we've gone from yeah. not doing it to now we are doing it. Well, yeah, I mean, Warren, to be fair, you can now see why Kevin calls him a flip flop. Flip flop. There's another word. I'll tell you what. Like you know, does Kevin have to put up with this on a regular basis? Unfortunately. Oh, dear. No it's a But don't be Kevin. It's me every Monday night. Monday night. No wonder you're going bald. <laughs> going, I've Go, gone. No, no, I've I've gone. I've Kevin, I've Kevin's a gentleman. Like, I'm not having a bad word said about him. He's an absolute gentleman, like, and I'm not having a bad word said about him, like, you know. Me right, or Kevin? Ups- I didn't want to upset you. Sorry. Me, me uh, or Kevin? <laughs> he's gonna. He's getting it big time. I tell you, like, don't worry about that, lot. But. Uh, I, bet oh, I'm like, I'm like, I want to see this on the beach. I hope you're going to wear flip flops when you're running along the beach as well. No, like. I'm out natural. Don't worry about yeah, that. I'm natural. Natural, <laughs> like, no. Get California. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Lads, it's, uh, it's been a great hour. So, something I've really enjoyed. Something you know, we don't normally do anything like this, Lee, do we? We don't really talk about international football. It's uh, you know, uh, predominantly uh, Arsenal. And I don't buy that. Is so. Uh, thanks well, for coming on, Warren, and being a gentleman. Like, you know, so, what you mean? Uh, it was a good fun hour rather than dragging along. It was, it was uh, awful, uh, well, <laughs> I think it was a fun hour, wasn't it? Like, yeah, it, I was it was fun. a fun hour. It, it yeah. was. It was fun. It was fun. I had a good time. Yeah, yeah good. and I hope we're right. You're drilling coming on if you do that podcast with him. Oh, no, no, no. You'll be you'll be fat. you'll be ringing us and texting us and messages saying, When am I coming back on? I know, I know, like no. <laughs> I'm gonna no. get my agent. I'm gonna get my agent involved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. say you I'm not too sure about that, Lee, really. Um no, I like that, but I suppose no, a bit it, of it was a pleasure. Now, I suppose it I say a, like a, that. Absolute pleasure, gentlemen. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. Warren, thank you very much. Um, it's not obviously it's not it's not very often I even get replies um, from from ex footballers and stuff. <laughs> I can, I can to be honest, uh, so yeah. Well, thank yeah yeah yeah. So I won't I won't I won't bring Lee on next I time. Me. Oh, I say yeah. me. I won't bring Lee on next time. Uh, no, it's great. Thanks very much for coming on, mate. We, it's really much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. Absolutely. And, and Warren's an Arsenal fan as well, like you know. What I mean, I, did you say that? Like you know, in his day, weren't you, Warren? I was, my friend. Stoke New Eaton. Clissel Park, playing me football. There you go, see? see I don't so there you it, go. I don't call it soccer, it's football. Football, football. exactly. Football, All the best. We'll be back. We will be back tomorrow night at six o'clock uh, with a question of Arsenal. Me, Lee and Dan will be going over the fixture uh, coming up on Thursday against Olympiacos for the Europa League. We will see you at six o'clock. Until we do, take care of yourselves and each other and up the Arsenal. Um...